Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phase 3. Previously, we worked on updating our NPCs and our player to have collisions between our character game objects. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. Alright, so now that we have our logic for checking for collisions between our player and our NPCs done, what we're going to work on next is we're going to work on updating our NPCs and our player so our player can actually talk to the NPCs. And so what this is going to involve is we need to check if our player is next to one of our NPC game objects. And if they press the space key, we'll want to go ahead and grab the messages from our NPC, so our data from Tiled, and we'll want to go ahead and display those messages in our dialogue component. Uh, so very similar to what we did for our signs, except we just need to do this for our NPC game objects. And so to go ahead and do this, the first thing we'll do is let's jump to our world scene. And let's come down to where we create our NPC, so we'll go to our create NPCs method. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add in logic for grabbing our messages string from our tiled data. And so what we'll do is let's copy this block of code that we did for our NPC frame, and we'll go ahead and paste it. And we'll go ahead and call this NPC messages string. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and find the property name uh, where we are past, we're looking for messages. And if a value is not found, we'll just return an empty string. So when we created our data and tiled, one of the things we did for our message strings is we added in a special uh, delimiter that we could use if we want to have our NPCs say multiple lines. Uh, and basically we have two colons uh, in our strings and that'll separate the two. And so what we need to do is we actually need to break up our string into an array uh, and use that separator. So we'll make a new variable and we're going to call this NPC messages. And we're going to set it equal to our NPC messages string. And what we'll do is we'll use the split method to go ahead and split our string up into an array and split based on this uh, string. And so this is just going to do two colons. And then what this will do, it'll go ahead and give us an array of our strings. And if it's just one line, we'll have an array with one message. And then once we have our NPC messages, uh, we need to go ahead and pass that to our NPC uh, class. And so what we'll do is let's add a new property and we're going to call this messages and we'll go ahead and pass in our NPC messages. All right. And so what we'll do next is just jump over to our NPC class and we need to go ahead and add in our messages to our uh, configuration here. Uh, so we're also passing in frame. And so what we'll do is we're going to do messages and this is going to be a string array. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add this property onto our class here. So on our class, uh, let's go ahead and add a new private property. And so we'll add in messages and we will go ahead and add in our type. And so this is going to be a string array. And then what we'll do is in our constructor, we'll go ahead and set that and so we'll do this. Our messages will be equal to our config messages. Uh, we're going to change the messages. All right, and messages. All right, so now that we have our messages on our class, uh, we need to go ahead and expose a method for getting these uh, from our world scene. And so when our player interacts with one of our NPC game objects, uh, we'll need to go ahead and grab the messages that are tied to that NPC. And for us to do that, we'll just go ahead and use a getter. And so we'll do get messages and we will go ahead and return a copy of our messages. So we'll return this messages and let's go ahead and throw in our type real quick. So let's copy that from the top of our class. We'll go ahead and add that to our getter. And so now that we have a way to get our messages, uh, what we can do is back in our world scene, when we're checking for our players interaction with our various game objects, we can now check for our NPCs. And so if we come up to our handle player interaction method, after we check to see if there is a nearby sign, uh, what we'll do is we'll check to see if there's a nearby NPC. And so to do that, let's make a new variable and we'll do const nearby NPC. And to check that, we need to go through our NPCs array and we're going to use our find method. And so we're going to check our NPC and we want to go ahead and check to see if that 
NPC's uh, sprite, so our, our phaser game object's position, is the same as the target position we're trying to move towards or interact with. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and return our NPC, our sprite x equals our target position x, and our NPC sprite y is equal to our target position y. And so if there is a nearby NPC, uh, then we want to go ahead and have our player uh, talk to that NPC. And so what we're going to do, we'll do if nearby NPC. And for the time being, let's just go ahead and throw in a council log. And we'll say talking to NPC. All right, so if we come over to our world scene, uh, what we should be able to do is go ahead and test. Uh, so we hit the space key uh, when we're not by our NPC, nothing should happen. And as soon as we get next to our NPC, as we see that our logic is working for finding if there's an NPC next to our player. And so what we're gonna wanna do is once we go to talk to our NPC, uh, the first thing we want is we want the NPC to face our player. Uh, so if our player comes from the side, it's going to be very awkward if the NPC is looking down and uh, talking to our player. Uh, so instead, we want this to be uh, a little more realistic so our NPC will face our character. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of our council log. And so what we'll do is we'll do our nearby NPC, and we're going to use that face player method uh, that we uh, created uh, previously. And so we need to go ahead and reference our player and grab our direction uh, where our player is currently facing. Then we, we want to do is we want to go ahead and show our dialog UI component so we can show our messages. And so we'll do this, our dialog UI, and we'll do show dialog modal. And now we need to go ahead and grab our messages from our NPC. So we'll do our nearby NPC and we will do messages. All right, so if we go ahead and save, we should be able to come back to our scene. We should be able to go ahead and test. Uh, so if we approach our NPC character from the side, if we hit the space key, we'll see right away our NPC now faces our player, and now we see our text from our NPC, uh, from our data, uh, from tiled. And then likewise, if we go from another direction, we'll see that our NPC now faces us again, and just leaves the same message, and then if we are facing them already, uh, they don't move. So then if we just want to do one more test, let's go ahead and come down to our other NPC. And if we talk to him, what should happen is he should talk about saving the game. If we hit the space key, we get his second message. So we validated that our parsing of our text is working and creating our array properly. And then we see our other message. All right, so now that we validate our basic logic is working, uh, we're going to go ahead and add some additional logic to our NPC in our world scene. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add some logic for allowing our NPC instance to know if it's actually talking to our player. And the reason for that is once we add in our NPC movement, uh, when we go to update the position for our NPC, we don't want to move the NPC or change the direction it's facing if the player's still in the middle of talking to that NPC. Uh, instead, we want the NPC to stand there and finish the conversation and then continue moving once we're done talking to them. And so we're going to need a way to track this uh, on our individual NPC instance. And so what we'll do is we're going to come to our NPC class and let's add in a new property. And so we're going to call this talking to player. And so for the type, this is just going to be a simple Boolean uh, that we're going to have to set to true once the player talks to them and then set to false once the dialogue is finished. And so we'll in our constructor, we're going to go ahead and set an initial value. We'll say talking to player, we'll set equal to false. And now we need a way to go ahead and get this value and also uh, update this value. And so we just need to go ahead and add a getter for getting it. So we'll do get is talking to player. And we're going to go ahead and return this talking to player. Go ahead and grab our type from up here uh, for our Boolean. Then we need to go ahead and add a setter so we can actually update this value. Uh, so we're going to do set is talking to player. And for here, we're going to receive a parameter, which will be our value. So it's going to be a Boolean. 
And then all we're going to do on here is this, talk into player, and we're going to set it equal to that value. And then so what we'll do is let's go ahead and add in our type for our parameter. So we'll do at param and for our val, and this is going to be a Boolean. All right, so now that we have a way to track this, let's jump over to our world scene. And what we're going to want to do is in our logic for when we go ahead and check for our nearby NPC, uh, so we'll come back up to our code. Um, once we have the NPC uh, face our player, uh, we're going to go ahead and call that new setter to set that value. So we'll do nearby NPC, and we will call is talking to player. And we'll just go ahead and update our property to true. And then we need to go ahead and set it to false. So for us to actually set it to false on our world scene, we know we need to know which NPC uh, we're currently talking to. And so we're going to add a new uh, private property. And so we're going to do this, and we'll do NPC player is interacting with. And we'll set that equal to our nearby NPC uh, so we have it as a reference. So real quick, let's come up to the top of our class. Let's go ahead and add in this new property. And for our type, we'll go ahead and copy this. It will not be an array, but it can be an NPC or it can be undefined. Uh, so it'll be undefined if the player is not talking to any NPC, and if it is, it will be defined. So then what we'll do is come down to our init method and let's go ahead and initialize it with uh, undefined. Uh, so we'll do this, NPCs interacting with, and we'll do undefined. And that was very explicit. That's what we're expecting. And now if we come back down to our code, uh, we'll have our value. And so now we just need to, once we've finished showing all of our dialogue messages, uh, we need to go ahead and set is talking to player to false. And we can go ahead and remove our NPC player uh, is interacting with reference. And so to do that, let's come to the top of our handle player interaction method. And so after we check to see uh, if it's visible and we have no more messages to show, after we hide our modal, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if this conversation was with the NPC. And so to do that, we're going to do this. NPC player is interacting with. And so if it's not undefined, uh, then we go ahead and call, then we can go ahead and update those properties. And so we'll do this, our NPC the player is interacting with, and we'll call our is talking to player setter to go ahead and set it to false. Then we want to go ahead and remove this reference. So we'll do NPC player is interacting with, we're going to set it equal to undefined. And then that way, We've now cleared that property, and when the player talks to another NPC, we'll go ahead and store that reference. And so just to validate that everything's still working, if we come over to our scene, let's go to one of our NPCs, and if we press our space key, we should still be able to talk to them, and we're not able to move around while talking, and if we press the space key, uh, we're now able to move around again. All right, so now that we have our code in place for talking to their NPCs, we're just going to do one minor refactor before we wrap up. And so if we come back to our code and go into our NPC class, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to modify our type definition for our character config. Uh, so for our NPC config specifically, uh, we're extending our character config and we're making a few values, but then we're also adding a few new uh, properties that we expect when we create our NPCs. And right now this works, but it's starting to get a little bit hard to read with just two properties on it. And so as our character class continues to grow, we're going to continue to add new and new uh, properties that we're going to expect in our configuration. And that's going to make this very, very hard. And so that's going to make this very hard to read. And so what we can do is instead of providing our object here, we can create another type definition with our object and then pass that here. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and add in a new JS config type. And we're going to do type def. And we're going to call this NPC config. We're going to call this props. And so for our type, this is going to be an object. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add our two properties uh, that we have here. So we're going to add our first property. And so this will be our number. And this is going to be our frame that we're expecting. And then likewise, we'll have one more property. And this is going to be our string array, which will be our messages. And so now that we have this new type definition, we can go ahead and replace our object here with that object. 
uh, type here. And so now if we do our NPC config props, now our line's a little bit easier to read and we still have our properties here. So then as we start adding in our animation and other functionality for NPCs, uh, we can just add those properties here without having to keep adding it to this line here. Uh, just becomes easier to read and a little bit more manageable. All right, and with that, that actually brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our NPCs, and we're going to add in our logic for allowing our NPC to move around our game. And so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see the links on your screen now.